remote learning has caused all sorts of challenges and it's made us think through an awful lot of things to try to make sure that we're meeting our students needs and being able to provide an education that's that's meaningful to them and one area that i know a lot of educators have really struggled with and i've struggled trying to wrap my brain around it as well is um <clears throat> taking care of uh, special needs yeah. in remote learning. Like, you know, with those those students that do have those special needs, how can we make sure that they are taken care of, especially when, you know, the whole resource structure that we have for them in regular face-to-face -face classes is either totally changed or totally missing. And we don't want to leave anybody behind for sure. And so that's why we're going to be talking about this today. And right in between Holly and I, We've got the person that whose brain we're going to be picking. This is <laughs> Pam Hubler, and um, we're going to be talking a lot about this today. So my name is Matt Miller. I'm the author of Ditch That Textbook, and wanted to say hello to all of you that are joining us live. If you're joining us live, please do in the chat. Let us know who you are, um, where you are, and what you do so that we can kind of shout out and say hello to you. Holly, you want to say a quick hello first? Yeah, I am Holly from the Infused Classroom in San Diego. But I want to say Matt is also the author of Ditch, Don't Ditch That, or I'm sorry, Tech Like a Pirate. So you did it and now I almost did it. <laughs> yep, that's right. Just go through all the titles and you'll get to the last one. There you go. That's right. All right. Well, we are thrilled to have uh, Pam Hubler right in between us. And so, um, Pam, can you tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, I'm Pam Hubler, or Special Techie on Twitter, and I'm an instructional coach um, uh, in uh, Berkeley County in South Carolina, um, basically Charleston. Um, and basically, I've taught special ed for mm, almost, I guess, three quarters of my career. So, and this is 23 years. Yeah, just finishing up 23rd year. So, I taught special ed for a long time before I became a coach. Wow. So, special ed is kind of how my brain works first. So it's kind of helpful when we're working with teachers to plan. Um, those are the kids we really have to think of first. And then, I mean, anything that we come up with for them, it's gonna help everybody. So it's just kind of, you know, it's helped me in that job. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Wanna do, do a couple of quick shout outs to some of the people that are there or that are here with us. Wow. Um, so Isabel is here from Germany. Good to see her. There's yeah. Rania again, always good to see her. She's been on several of our videos. Um, so it's good to have her joining. Connie is here from Southern California. There's another regular oh. face that we've seen a number of times. Felice is here from Aurora, Colorado, originally from Coronado. So we got oh. California representing okay. mm -hmm. as usual. Um, Josie is here from Washington State. Good to see her. Cassandra's here from New York City. Wanda from Garland, Texas. Um, Maria is here from Chicagoland. We've got Wanda. Just got off the North Carolina online session with me. Yeah, I was just doing a session. I've actually still got my slides up on my second display from that. I ran straight from that over to this. So apparently Wanda has not grown tired of my voice. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, Sean's here from Detroit. Uh, Cassandra is a special ed teacher. So um, I will also say real quick, if you are in the, um, if you're watching this live and you've got other things to, to share, you know, your own experiences and, and that kind of thing, we love to hear from all of you and to shout out your good ideas on the screen. So um, Sue is here. Good to see her. Um, we've got, oh, Maria is new to Pam, so uh, she's very well. glad to make that introduction. So we've got a couple of others that are here. I'll kind of pop those up onto the screen, but um, Pam, would you mind just kind of starting us out with just kind of putting your finger on this whole remote learning situation mm -hmm. and the fact that, you know, the, the, the whole special needs situation is, it's, it's, it's been a, it's just been a tough situation, hasn't it? Yeah. And I think in the beginning of all this, um, we had to remind teachers that students still have IEPs, like they still have goals. Um, they still have accommodations and modifications. And that was kind of the hard thing. Well, how do we do that in person? And or compared to in person, how do we do that at home? Um, so they really had to kind of get creative with, okay, maybe that face-to-face -face time, we might have to do a Google Meet or, and just check in with them and Google Classrooms, adding the special ed teacher to Google Classrooms um, and 
telling them how to turn off notifications. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. just so that way they can always be there and have a pulse on what's going on in their classes. And then our special ed teachers not feeling like they are adding more to the kids' plates. We just wanna make sure that they are doing okay with what the expectation is since we're not working together in PLCs as much. Um, so that, that's been, that was probably the hardest in the beginning. Um, but they really, I think, you know, here, they really got used to it. Um, and I think we honestly saw our special ed and gen ed teachers talking more because they were oh. able to pop on to PLCs through Google Meet um, and really plan together and kind of help out with all the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it sounds like, I, I want to kind of follow up on on that, that last part that you mentioned that, um, you know, it sounds like a lot of meeting those accommodations you know, there's some some strategy involved in it, but it sounds like a lot of it just comes down to communication too. And um, so I wondered if um, if you could just share um, from the regular classroom teacher perspective mm -hmm. and from the special needs teacher perspective, like what are some suggestions that you might have to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that we're, we're doing that communication well? Yeah, well, and I think the communication part, um, I know it was hard for us to schedule PLCs even while we weren't there, um, but having that weekly check-in with the grade levels was really helpful. Just if they had random questions or, hey, I'm gonna be working on this unit next, how do I get that to my kids where they get the content from me, um, but then they can work on their own, they're not stuck to a computer all day, um, like, and making sure that the amount of work they're doing um, is appropriate and just, I mean, is it something like, what's our key takeaway from when we look at our standards? What is it that we need them to know? And then just kind of unpacking those standards and then kind of prioritizing what it is that they have to know. Um, because we could have them do this choice board, we could have them do this, 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 but is it all, we just have to look at the goal first and the standards, so. Yeah. Well, I could say this. I know like when I now this is not remote learning, but in the classroom, people used to tell me about um, this, the needs of my students and, and tell me some strategies. And they and I remember this, they would give me a packet or a binder of all these things that you could do to help the kids. And I really appreciated that. But I was sort of digitally fluent from the get go. And um, I would look at this and go, oh my gosh, this would work so much better if I were using Seesaw or if you want me to do this and grab their thinking and understand where they are, look at this flip grid. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I've noticed is that in remote learning with the schools that I'm working with, particularly one in Bath, Maine, um, that the uh, special ed teachers came to a meeting that we had and were like, I, I don't know how I lived without flip grid. Mm -hmm. because, and we all know this, but right. because of that communication piece and because they couldn't always be like office hours and the kids might not be available, they had this place where they left instructions or advice or the kids asked questions on the, on a grid. And it seemed to like, they were so happy to share. And when I got off, I actually texted Charlie who, you know, runs Flipgrid. And I'm like, you would have died to have been on this call of how it's helping this, those teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I noticed that um, Felice said um, something about staying on top of IEPs being hard um, and having to progress monitor um, was a challenge. And that's one of the things that I think everybody, we look at grades, we look at progress monitoring, those things that don't really go away, even though we're not there in person. Um, and that and Flipgrid is one of those things that's an easy way to progress monitor. Because um, you, know, you can share, or even Google Classroom, where you can do assignments for certain kids. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's just, there's so many different ways and yes, technology isn't required to be able to do remote learning, but it, it does make it a lot easier. Yeah. And those individual assignments are definitely a great way to progress monitor. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wondered if we could kind of drill down on that. I'll, I'm guessing that a lot of the people that are watching this are familiar with mm -hmm. Flipgrid. If you're not, it's a video response tool where, you know, the teacher can create a prompt or a question and students can respond with videos. And of course the teacher can create videos too. Lots and lots of ways that people use it. And Pam, I know you're a big Flipgrid fan yes. as, as Holly and I both are. And I wondered if, just from the mind of a special needs teacher, if you could kind of look at that tool and kind of give us some some strategies or some ideas for how that could be used to, to support some of those students. I think it's great, especially for the students that one, have a hard time getting their thoughts on paper. 
um, because they can just do it verbally. And if they don't want to be seen on camera, there are ways they could put the little uh, emoji on top of it or even hold something in front of them. Um, and honestly, most of the kids now, they like hearing themselves and like watching themselves on video. The adults, maybe not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're fixing our hair and, you know, the kids don't care. Um, and that, so that's one way that they can use that. Um, and I have seen some teachers actually create different boards like for uh, or topics topics for um, whether it's maybe book snaps is one um, or I need help um, and actually I think you guys may have talked about that on the Google teacher tribe once um, where it's like that one that I need help get help kind of thing where kids yeah. can go to that one if they need help or if they and they can answer each other almost like their little own student run technology team you know um, there's so, so many, so many different ways. And Flipgrid, I think is also, Wakelet is one of the ways I like to get content to kids um, or teachers really. And now with Flipgrid, you can embed it in there. So you can even do directions yourself as the teacher, have that at the top of the Wakelet <laughs> collection and then, you know, go from there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my language. <laughs> yeah. Just real quick before we move on, um, for anybody that's not familiar with Wakelet, Pam, do you want to give them just the, the real quick nutshell of what it is? Yes. And I know, Holly, you can do that too. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like to call it like Pinterest <laughs> with more of a linear format and more of a structure. So you can curate, you can add things to it. Um, in, in uh, I've seen them used as like a hyperdoc. Um, yeah. There's so many different ways and I, like I made a template for uh, a digital lesson plan because when we first left, um, we had to have like 10 days of work kind of set up. <laughs> and so we, I made a wakelet template where it just had day one and then you can add your content underneath and day two, day three. So that way kids kind of had, um, without having a calendar, without having, they could just kind of, okay, day one, this is what I need to do. Yeah. Um, so, and it was just kind of an easy way to get that to them with one link in Google Classroom or Seesaw or whatever you use, but then you can also share that with parents. And it's one link, it works on a phone, it works on a computer, like it works everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I even use it for newsletters. I mean, everything. Yeah, you do, by the way. You yeah. use it for, so why don't you talk about that real quick and we'll come back in a minute, but it's an important part. Yeah, and I also uh, made a wakelet for just some of the resources to help with this conversation. Um, I don't know if that's below the video or not, but okay. Um, yeah, so we've got the wakelet collection there and I just added things that have to do with universal design for learning um, or any resources that have to help or that would help you um, with your kids with special needs. Um, we also had a ed camp um, remote learning um, and that I also link that in there. So that way there's one topic on helping students uh, with special needs. Um, so you can get to that. So um, that's under the video in the comments? Uh, I don't know. The, here, the, I have it right here. So just okay. Okay. put it in. Yeah, yeah. Holly's going to share it with me and I'll put it up here on the screen and then I'll drop it into the chat as well. So um, this is Pam's Wakelet collection. So I'll, yeah, I'm going to put that on the screen in just a second. Okay. Yeah, because I can't see the uh, uh, choice, but somebody said they, um, Wanda mentioned that um, about choice boards with links. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that was one of the things that's been really helpful too, because then you can focus on students' IEP goals um, and just really specify what it is that you want them to do. Mm -hmm. And now I see it there. Yep. And what's really good about Wakelet is it's also um, embedded with uh, Flipgrid Shorts, which is the camera in Flipgrid. And we're going to talk a minute more about Flipgrid. But, um, and, and Matt and I are actually going to have a show about this because we think a way to level up teaching is to really start to think of directions differently mm -hmm. so that it meets the needs of all students. And in doing that, it's leading video instructions that come with also written instructions and we're not doing enough of that and kids need to be able to go back and listen to that as well as parents and special teachers special ed teachers who are trying to help out so we're going to have a whole video on that but inside of wakelet you can quickly do that so next to what you're talking about you could have a video that's placed that's like okay day one for those kids who need to hear it the audio the the kids with executive functioning the kids who have processing issues so um, that's important. 
And in case you don't know Flipgrid, Matt's going to put up on the screen as well um, a link to I have an online course that's free about Flipgrid. Flipgrid's going to be changing June 29th. <laughs> but until that big change, um, that free course in, in an hour, you could be a Flipgrid aficionado if you're not using it yet. And one of the things about Wakelet also, um, Immersive Reader is embedded in that. And that's amazing. So even if you need to type out directions, they can just click the little speaker and it'll read it to them. So, I mean, I've done it myself, honestly, if I'm just kind of multitasking. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I just want to listen to it. So. so I was at a Microsoft event. It was really cute. And um, this one guy from Wales did this presentation called Too Long IR. Instead uh -huh. of Too Long Don't Read, like Too Long, use Immersive Reader and read it to yourself. And oh, I was like, oh, that's <laughs> I have to write that down. <laughs> I know yeah, it's really yeah. cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to pull some stuff over from the comments real quick. We've had some some really good stuff coming in. Check this out from Angela. She says, I've been offering hyperdocs with my high school caseload. It's been great. Mm -hmm. And uh-huh. Yep. So I was wondering yes. just from from either of you, just sort of thoughts on this. This seems to me like a really good combination of the two. And we might even have some people listening that don't know what hyperdocs are. I did attach um, a hyperdoc that's for, it's how to personalize learning. It's from the book with uh, Barbara Bray and Kathleen. Ooh, my faves. I can't think of the last name. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so I did attach that because it kind of, and it is and it is really helpful for our students to know what type of learner they are. And even with all this, when it happened, like even my own daughter's like, I don't like this. I really don't like, I need to listen to my teachers and then I can do my work mm -hmm. where my son, he just wants to be around people. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but knowing how you are as a learner, just knowing what questions to ask, like, well, how do I learn best? So I did add a hyperdoc in that Wakelet collection Good. that you can make a copy of, and it has all those questions that can guide it through. And it's for students. So it makes the students think about how they learn best. And um, after every, like the hyperdocs for students, they are really helpful because the students can work at their own pace but it kind of keeps them focused. And if it's a true hyperdoc, they can actually um, add their learning to it um, yeah. where they're actually responding within it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just a sheet of paper, you know, a Google doc that has yeah. links on it. Right. They're actually responding and doing things within the doc. So, and I'm sure Holly, you can add to that. <laughs> that's what I do every day. Let's talk about HyperDocs. But um, uh, one of the things that's really important is there are two versions of HyperDocs. There's a multimedia text set, which is actually a, a doc with links, which is fantastic because right. it can be an explore board. It can be a choice board. Um, and then there's a HyperDoc, which allows kids to do the four C's and have a full lesson design inside of this doc. And what I have found in my own teaching is that I might have a few kids who need a kind of a bit of a little different lesson. And so the, the HyperDoc looks exactly the same on face value. So if you walk by their Chromebook and you see that they're working on a HyperDoc, it looks exactly the same. But what I've dished out to them is maybe something on Newzella that's a fifth grade reading level and everyone else is working on the eighth grade reading level and they have no idea and so that's been really um, a great way to use hyperdocs for me and for um people who are using uh, google classroom of course you can just assign those to the different kids same thing in microsoft teams i can have a private channel with those kids and 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 they get that particular doc but if you walk by you have no idea that that's happening no kid even right. knows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that kind of goes along with, yeah, what, what Wanda said here. Um, she was talking about immersive reader as well. Great mm -hmm. for parents who need language translation. I really like this comment that came in from Kristen. She says, kids need to be trained. And I'd love to have Pam have you weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. Kids need to be trained on how to use video and written instructions. We were just talking about this, right? Mm -hmm. We've been doing both all during remote learning and kids still don't use all of the resources. So as far as helping them not just to figure out what they're supposed to do, but also how to work with instructions, to work with directions and everything. Is there something to that, do you think? And I think this is one of those that goes along with knowing how they learn. Like, but yeah. it's not just the teacher knowing how they learn. The kids have to know how they learn. Yeah. And it's the so standard, by the way, to number one is the standard is to know how you how you learn. But anyway, right. go ahead. 
Yeah. No. And, and it just, I mean, even knowing how to, you know, okay, well, I'm going to do a Google doc and I need to get my writing out there, but I want to get my thoughts out without typing it all. Just knowing that they can just go to the little speaker and they can just speak <laughs> and it'll start typing and then they can edit from there. Just all those different little tips and tricks that they need to know how to do, which of course it's kind of hard to teach these when we're already out of school. So it's something we definitely need to show the kids during <laughs> the school year. Um, and you know, it's just, it's just one of those, like a boot camp. I think um, Tech Chef for You, actually, in her Creatively Productive, that's one of the things. You are a learner. Oh my gosh, I, it's it's bad. You, I, you can't see the book behind me, but I have a lot of them. Um, <laughs> so, but she talks about doing a boot camp in the beginning of the year with uh, students, and yeah. it's just getting them organized. Oh, you know, we, what's that? And you need to do a boot camp with parents. Yeah, yeah. You that's need true. to understand this. So they're going to come to you and go, I don't want my kid on Flipgrid. But anyway, right. go ahead. Yeah, understanding how to do it. I mean, using Google Keep and using Google Calendar. And it doesn't have to be Google. It's just the language I speak. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. so knowing all those things, like what they need to do to just be able to function, you know, mm -hmm. with their work and keeping up with it. I think that's the hardest part. But we have to have those conversations with them. Yeah. Yeah. So can I say something? Sorry, man. You were. Um, no, you're good. I'll hold it. Oh, <laughs> don't lose it. See, I'll lose it because I'm older than you. So, like, <laughs> um, but so one thing that I started to do right before this like uh, thing happened is with these um, instructions. So I started to really leave instructions on Flipgrid so that the kids could rewatch, and then I started to do something where I had them respond on the uh, on the topic. What did you hear in those instructions? And that changed everything. Oh, I was like, wow. holy crap. Reflection. Reflection you know, is key. <laughs> well, they heard something totally different, some of them. Do you know what I mean? And then I could go pull them aside or send them something, make a wakelet for them. That was like, no, that's not what I was asking for. Because I like to be really project-based. And, um, and I need to know that they understand this. And it was eye-opening to me how different the 30 responses were around a one simple instruction around a bento box. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like. Yeah. It's fascinating how we can say one thing and, and this isn't just with kids, this is with adults too. You know, everybody hears something different. And so trying to make sure that we know what everybody has heard, you know, that, that can be, that can be pretty big. By the way, I wanted to throw this comment up really quick. We were talking about the, the boot camps, right? Boot camps with kids. And, um, we mentioned how you need boot camps with parents too, right? Did you see this comment from Diana? She says, yes, at my campus, we call tech and tacos for parents. Oh, nice. Now I gotta know like, where, did the, where did the tacos come in? Well, she's okay. probably from something. I don't know, but I am Where's all about from, tacos. Diane? So tell us where you're from, Diane, because that's a very San Diego thing to do. <laughs> oh like yeah, that. yeah. You know they like tacos in other places too. <laughs> so. No. Yes. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay, my bad. I must have gotten it when I visited San Diego a couple of times. So. Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, go ahead, Holly. Ooh, jam boards. There's uh, Angela is talking about jam boards are a great way. That's nice. And you have something to say, so go ahead. Yeah, I was going to kind of switch just a little bit to something else that um, that I wanted to pick Pam's brain about, because that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, I know one thing that I've seen across both Google and Microsoft platforms is the ability to dictate text. You know, in Microsoft Word, they call it voice typing and or sorry, not Microsoft Word and Google Docs, they call it voice typing and okay. Microsoft Word, they call it dictation and um, I just wondered, Pam, if you've um, if you've had any experience with it, and if you feel like during remote learning, if we mention this as a as an option for students, if it can help kind of break down barriers. Oh, definitely. And I I tell parents that all the time. And when I did have IEP meetings, I used to tell the parents just like should this is really helpful because they can get their thoughts out on the digital paper um, and then they can edit from there. And some teachers might say, well, that's kind of cheating. It's like, well, we're not, we have to think about what is the goal again. Um, <laughs> and if you want to just, if you just want to know what they are thinking, 
just let them get it out. It doesn't matter how they get it out. We just want them to get it out. And then mm -hmm. when it comes to like notes, that's probably my biggest pet peeve. Yep. When, you know, you first 15 minutes of class or whatever, you're just copying notes. Oh my goodness. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. and really it's like, okay, I've shared some, like, you know, if you want to do a slide presentation or something like that. And if the kid does want to kind of listen to what's going on and take some notes, I mean, you can even sit close enough to the teacher, turn on the little audio and it'll like show up in the notes um, yeah. or the yeah. notes section. Um, I mean, there's so many different things you could do. You just want them to get the content. It doesn't matter how they get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just want them to get the content. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, or, and I think we're all thinking this right now, they can learn to sketch note. So at a school that I work with in Oklahoma, we took an entire day. It was uh -huh. a Friday, a day that maybe kids, you know, or, you know, on task as much. <laughs> um, and we brought them into the library, one class by one class, and we taught them how to sketch note with a video from Sylvia Duckworth. And they looked at the icons and we talked about it. Now they didn't become master sketch noters, but we brought the teachers in too. And so the teachers now could ask kids when I'm doing these presentations. Um, you could just look at, we gave them a sheet of icons and just start to draw as we talk because we know from people and their research that doodling when someone's talking, mm -hmm. you um, you up your retention of that. Yeah. So I think we need to be thinking in terms of uh, letting kids sketch note, especially it with the kids who are, too many words are going to hurt or, or, or block them from doing stuff. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was one of the things that I started doing this year um, when I would go into the classroom because some of the teachers weren't familiar with sketch noting. And um, when when I realized this was a thing, oh my gosh, this would have made my life so much yeah. easier in school because I was the one that got in trouble for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would always be doodling or drawing because it helped me focus on what's really going on um, and not. I don't know, looking around or watching what's outside the window yeah. and that kind of stuff. So um, it's great for that. But I would do um, like a little poster from um, Carrie Bauckham's book, um, My Pencil Made Me Do It. And it was a visual thinking question. So it's kind of like prompts. Um, and I did, I have a wakelet, of course. Yay. <laughs> I, have, I have a wakelet that I made kind of as my lesson plan format so that way I can share it with the teacher and then they can share it with their kids through Google Classroom so that way if we didn't get through all the content or I went through fat too fast or whatever then they could always go back and look um, and then I had a challenge at the bottom like okay are you interested you want to try it watch this little video and see what you can come up with you know um, they didn't have to do it um, so I'll add that to I'll add the wakelet to the wakelet so that way you can see the sketch noting in the classroom and you could probably do the whole thing virtually as well because yeah. you don't have to be in person to have the conversation yeah and i'm um, just added so matt can add it um i have a blog post on that day of sketch noting that includes a google classroom link that you can get in and it has all of sylvia duckworth's um stuff that she made for this day of sketch noting and the video the slide deck the research all of it so that's a really good resource and so i i live in san diego obviously and we're big we are the avid town and i i taught avid for a long time in case you don't know what um avid is it's advancement via individual determination or something like this some i forget the acronym but it's about helping kids succeed um kids who might who are high potential but not maybe meeting that potential and i just want to scream every time they do cornell notes in fact i tweeted them once and then we got into a little argument so i was like i'm gonna let it go uh but like, dude, enough with the Cornell notes and your kids who are high potential. Like, let's talk about sketch noting, and um, because those are the kids that are doing that. Like, they love to draw. Right. And so, the, I'm just, now I'm over it. Okay, good. We're back. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> as we're talking about sketch noting, I'm I'm so glad that we're bringing this up and how the active hands per you know promote the you know the the mind on matter, you know, the being, being focused in, um, I will also say as someone who has done a fair note of a fair amount of sketch noting in his life that, um, live sketch noting is the hardest kind to do. So, <laughs> yeah, 
if you're sitting and you're listening to someone and you're trying to visually and verbally get ideas down onto a paper or a tablet or something, it can be hard. Um, so what you can do with that sometimes is use it almost like a review activity or a recap activity. Have students sketch out what they remember. And then it becomes retrieval. It becomes recall. Um, which gives them a reason to dig into their brain and see what they can remember, which also leads, you know, research tell us, tells us that also leads to long-term memory. And so um, lots of different ways to do it. Some kids are going to be able to do live sketch noting. Um, I would also say with that, if you want them to try to do that, keep your expectations low as far as the amount yeah. of content they can get in, you know, right. like if you have them live sketch note and they get four or five key concepts down, that's probably doing really good. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I put in another link because I noticed I went to the link and it didn't go straight to the Google classroom. So both of those, um, go to that day of sketch noting. Uh, I love what you said. Like, don't, don't think that they're going to do this. This is, um, like, a little bit is good. And I found with the day of sketch noting, they went back and they couldn't do it. And the teachers were like, they can't do it. And so now what, this was a waste of time. And I had to sit down and be like, you think of it like riding a bike. We put on training wheels. Then we were not like, it doesn't happen all at once. Although riding a bike kind of does like click one day, but so will, so will sketch noting. So anyway, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We have covered a lot of ground here. This has been really good. Um, I thought I would put another, I got one more quick uh, comment. I've been holding on to this comment from Angela. I got to say, uh, Angela has been dropping some knowledge bombs during this uh, presentation. This has been really good. So um, trying to put it back up there. There it is. She says, another idea is creating a monthly challenge. One task a day with really small tasks. I think this was going back to the boot camp idea. Could be to learn a concept or organize their drive and then have them show their work. And, you know, talk about practicing good uh, executive functioning skills and, you know, all of the the kind of like the glue that holds everything together, right? I thought this was a really good idea. Right. And that, and that really yeah. goes with like when we talk about universal design for learning um, and that is linked in, in my wakelet. So just if you haven't ever really explored it, because it's not super easy to explain quickly, <laughs> um, you have to look at the resource. But when you're looking at it, self-regulation is part of it um, as far as, you know, just for them to know, just know how they're learning and being able to process it, share it, all that's super important. So that, that goes right along with that. That's like my passion yep. this year is like understanding who you are as a learner because yeah. you're gonna need that if we go back into a remote learning situation. Right. Um, Pam, I wanna just show, yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanna say one more thing that I tried and, and get your input on it and then you know we can close up or whatever. But so I think it was this year I tried, no last year, it was the first year I tried this. I had kids who were struggling with writing. So like mm -hmm. I would say, here's the prompt and they would be like, oh, my mom said I could write at home because I'm not very good at writing. And I got all that a, a lot from certain right. kids or they would just sit there and they couldn't write. So I decided to use Flipgrid to have them brainstorm and like record almost like it's a, a conference with me, what they're going to be writing about. So they would sit and be like, well, I think I'm going to write about mm -hmm. animal rights and um, I'm going to do it. And I'm really interested in this part. And I thought, okay, this is good. But what happened next was then I had the kids like watch each other's and one of the kids would say, Oh, and don't forget about like the uh, humane oh, right. that we have here. You should add that. And they would be like, Oh, that was a really good idea. But what, what happened was is that the kids, kept going back to this recording and I would watch it and they'd be like can I is it okay if I watch my flip grid again I want to hear what I was going to write about and I was like this is weird <laughs> like yeah. I didn't expect this I thought it was going to be like um like oh it's me trying to use flip grid too much you know right. and um I could not believe how many times some of those kids went back and listened as they were writing and then when they got done and they were done with their like prompt they went back and listened to it and were like oh yeah I got it all and I love that. I, love, I think what's so great about that is that it's the same as like as adults. And we've talked about it. Like if you're on a run or driving yeah. and you're listening to a podcast or whatever, you're like, oh my gosh, I got to remember that you're doing voice memos or whatever. But those are not things that I knew even, I even thought about doing when I was a kid. So mm -hmm. using Flipgrid like that, it's kind of like that beginning skill of, yeah, all this is, is you making a note for you to remember later. Yeah. <laughs> And thinking yeah. it through, like you're talking to a friend. Right. 
Like it doesn't have to be um, a, a, a graphic organizer where I have like animal rights. Right. You know, like those, that's good too, if that's your learning style, but we're all not the same kid. Right, mm -hmm. that is true. Yeah. I do remember learning the mind map thing. And I don't yeah. think it was, I think I might've been in eighth grade and I was like, oh my gosh, where has this been? Yeah. Cause it gave me like, you can get it out. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> At some yep. organization a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been fantastic. We've, like I was saying earlier, we've covered so much grand. We've touched on lots of things. Hopefully if you're watching this, you've gotten some really good ideas and Pam, you brought it today. This is yeah. fantastic stuff. We really, good. really appreciate having you on the show. I feel like I just kind of go off on a tangent and forget what we're talking about. And <laughs> so, um, uh, tell everyone where they can like see your stuff, your potty PD. I mean, yeah. you have incredible resources, and we've heard about what an incredible learner you are. So you put those all together for magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, Twitter is the best place, um, and it's at Special Techie. And I also have a blog, and it's spedtechgeek.com. Um, um, and of course, that comes from the special ed background, but then I always have been a technology fan. So that's where those two come together. I don't think I'm special. Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> we do. That's where the combination came from. <laughs> so, and then on Instagram, which I don't use quite as much, it's Pam underscore edu coach. So I, I gotta get more on Instagram, but I just, I don't know. It's the link thing. Like I can't link in there. Like I hate that, but. It's for me that it's mostly yeah. mobile. I can't be like typing all that. I wanna do it on my computer. So right. I struggle with it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. This has been great. Um, Pam, thanks again so much for, for joining us for this. Um, if you've been watching this and you've enjoyed this video, would love it if you subscribe to the Ditch That Textbook YouTube channel. And then um, Holly and I are both on Facebook. So just go search for Ditch That Textbook or the Infused Classroom and you can add us and catch more videos like this because I know some of you are watching this on Facebook. So um, Anyway, any parting words of wisdom or ideas as we wrap up, ladies? No, but I think we need to have Pam on again. Uh, yeah. I love doing these. So <laughs> I have friends that are like, do you sleep? Like, no, I don't think you do. No, no. <laughs> I agree. All right. Great. Well, again, thank you so much for, for joining us, everyone, whether you're live or you're catching this on the replay, and we hope to see you on another video. So take care, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye, everyone.